This is the MA6. It's used to expose uh, UV light to your substrate that has uh, either photoresist on it. So before we run the machine, the first thing we got to do is make sure the light bulb is turned on or even not blown up. So we come out to the back and you can see the lights turned on by the reflection here or you can see the light glowing. So you know that the light bulb is on. But in addition to that, you want to find out how many hours are left on the light bulb. So you check the power supply. And you hold this button called DS. And it says 3226. That's how many hours the bulb has been used. So the bulb has a lifespan of 4,000 hours. So when it's over 3,500, you would notify staff and tell them to change it. So we're pretty close to that. Now that the bulb is uh, okay to use, and there's nothing wrong with the bulb and the power supply, we want to uh, log into the system. So before we log in, we check the logbook. And the logbook would say that the last person who used it was Monica on uh, 221. And then you would check what notes she had or anything was wrong. So you can see there's nothing wrong. So we're, we're ready to turn the machine on and log in. So the login computer is here. You have to log in to use the machine, otherwise it won't turn on. And the login has uh, several functions. The first, the screen is the login, where you type in username and password. You can schedule uh, to use a machine at different hours. Also, you, can, you should check this to make sure nobody else is using it. So today is the 24th, and it's 10 a.m., and there's nobody using it, so we're free to use it. Also, there's a history tab where we can see the last uh, user. And you can see that Monica was the last user, and she was the last one to write in the logbook. So once we know the machine's uh, ready and it's okay to use, we just log in. So once you've logged in, the machine will be able to power up. And what we do now is we turn the on switch on here. So we just turn it to the on switch. And you can see the machine starting up. And it's important to read the screen. It tells you a lot of information. So it says, ready for start, press load button. So the load button's right here. And we press that. And now it says, watch out, machine is starting up. The, you know when the machine is ready for load and start it up when it, the information says ready for load. So before we run the machine, the one pr uh, thing we can do is change the parameters. So you hit this button called edit parameter. And now you can, you can adjust the parameters such as time and gap distance and type of exposure. So how do we uh, edit the parameters or change the different parameters? We use the X uh, left and right. So we move this way, you can change the gap, change the type of contact, and then change exposure type. So let's change the exposure time first. So it's at five seconds now. We can change it to 25 seconds. If you hold fast and up, you can change it faster. So it's a 25. Let's make it 26. Now we want to go slower so we don't hit fast. We just... So now we've adjusted the exposure time. Let's change the alignment gap. Let's make that 40. And then let's change the type of, we'll make it a soft contact. And now your parameters have changed. There's different types of uh, exposure types from soft, vacuum, hard. Uh, you can look at the supplemental to get more information. But right now we'll set it as soft. So once your parameters are set, you can hit edit parameter. What we're gonna do now is load the mask. So how do we load the mask? We better we press a button called change mask on the screen. So when you hit change mask, you're ready to load the mask. So we put it in here. So you would load your mask in here by lift, lifting this uh, clip here and putting it in. And when it's in nice, you hit this button called enter and you can toggle the vacuum. So right now the vacuum is off. When you press enter, now the vacuum is on. And when you come back, you can see that it's, uh, it's vacuumed in and stuck pretty well. So now we're going to put this in here. So we carefully carry it. 
and we place it all the way in. And when it's in, we press change a mask. And that's how you load your mask. We're going to be doing a backside alignment now. So what this does is it aligns features on the back of your wafer to your mask. And how you do it is with a microscope from the bottom. So the first thing we do is uh, we have to have a mask loaded. And then we turn the screen on. And we make sure this thing says backside alignment microscope is on. So it's on. But also we need to change this to backside alignment. So it can be either a topside alignment or it can be a backside alignment. So this is the illumination. So now the light is coming from the backside. So if you look in here, you can see the light hitting the features. So that's the microscope from here coming, looking up and light hitting it. So we can look for those on the screen now. And uh, pretty much what you do is uh, this controls the microscopes on the back. So you can select one at a time and move around till you find your features. It looks like uh, we found our alignment marks on the mask. So we need to adjust the focus. So you use this top straight uh, left and right. So the left one adjusts the left. And the right one will adjust the right focus. You can also adjust the intensity. And you can also adjust the position. So if I want to move this one up and down, I would hit right, and then I would move it up and down. If I want to hit move the left one, it's a similar thing. So when you find your mask, and you think you're ready to do exp uh, exposure and align it, you would grab this image. So you press uh, grab image button right here. And when you press that, what it does, it, it takes a picture of the mask. And now we're ready to load the wafer. We press this button where it says load wafer. So it says pull slide and substrate onto chuck. And then we would just load our wafer on. And then when it's in, you press enter, and it'll bring it up. So now you, you can see you're in contact. This is the image overlay from the mask. And these features right here, see that they're, they're the bottom substrate of your wafer. So how do you move the wafer? We know that these buttons move the microscope. So how do we move the wafer? It's these buttons, right? It's these knobs right here. This is the Y. This, the X is on this side, and this is the tilt. So I'll give you an example. I can turn this, and you can see the background, these images moving. And then you can see this moving. So this is the Y position on the left side, and on the right side is the X knob. And you can adjust the tilt with this too. And how, you can adjust the focus. And you can adjust the intensity of light. So you would do that to find your alignment marks and then align them. So once you have aligned them, you're ready for exposure. And how do you expose? You press the, first you do alignment check, which will bring it up to touch. You want to make sure nothing moved. And then when it's in contact, you hit exposure. And then when you hit exposure, it's good to turn your back away from the light so it doesn't damage your eye. So we hit exposure, and then we just turn away. So after exposure, you need to unload your wafer. So what would you do is, um, you would come to the screen, and it will say, pull slide uh, unload exposed substrate. So you just pull it out, and then this is, you press the enter button, and then the vacuum will be released. And you can take your wafer out. And then you would put it back in. So that's how you unload your wafer after exposure. What we're gonna do now is top side alignment by using the microscope on the top. 
to align to the wafer uh, that's underneath through the glass. So to do top side alignment, we need to remove the back side microscope. So we press this button, that turns it off. Also, we need to put the illumination to the top side. And then uh, we can load our wafer in. So again, you press load, and it says pull slide and load substrate onto chuck. And then you press enter when you do that. And the microscope will automatically come down because we have the BSA microscope light, uh, button off. So now it's down, we, we turn the TV screen on. And what, what this is doing is taking the Im, uh, putting the image from here onto the screen. So again, this, these buttons right here control the X and Y position of the microscope. So it looks like we found something here. So we can turn up, it's pretty, the power of uh, illumination is pretty high intensity. So we can lower the power and you can see that. So we gotta find the mask alignment mark on this side. So there's different functions on this. This knob right here. So if you move it, uh, this, will, this will control the light microscope, the X position of the right microscope. And the left side has the same button. So when I move the left knob, I can turn this way. When I move the right knob, I can turn it this way. We can adjust the tilt to make these match up by turning this knob right here. So they look like it's uh, pretty matched up. So what would you do is uh, you would do the same thing as a, similar to backside alignment. You would align your alignment marks on your wafer to these right here. So you can see that if I move this, this always, these, these knobs always control the substrate. So when I move this, you can see that this has been moved. So you can tell that's the actual substrate moving, not the mask. So you would try to focus it, and you would try to find your alignment marks and align them to the features. And then once you have aligned it, you do the same thing, and you do a alignment check, and then I'll bring the mask up, and then you would expose it. So you press expose, and then you do exposure again. So then you turn away so the UV light doesn't hit your eyes. So after you're done with exposure, you would unload your wafer, so it tells you pull slide or unload substrate. So you pull it out, and then you would take it out. Now you finish your sample. You put this back in. Now if you're done, you want to move this back up and you don't want to bring it back down. This is where you press the BSA button. So by default, this will not come down. But also to bring this up, you press F1 and enter. And it will bring the microscope up. It's always good to leave it in this, this position with the microscope up and the, the BSA button on because that way the microscope doesn't come on and up every time you're using it. So after that, we're ready to uh, take out our mask. If we want to unload a mask, it's, we press the change mask. It's pretty similar to loading it. It's a reverse process. You would press change mask. You would take your substrate out. You would hit the enter button to remove the vacuum. And then you would take your weight mask out. You would press the change mask button again. And it would say confirm would enter that you know the mask is there. So now we're ready to turn the system off. So we want to make sure everything's in the standby position that you started the machine with. And then before you turn it off, you want to make sure you write in a logbook the different parameters. So the, the compressed air is about 4.9. The nitrogen is about 
the vacuum is about 0.86, negative 0.86. We used a four inch wafer with silicon and we did 25 second exposure. Now we're ready to turn off. First, first thing we do is we turn off the switch here. And also the TV screen. And then we can log out here. And there's some messages like, did you reset the X, Y, and tilt position? And we did that, so we put OK.